Hey everybody, my name is Pablo Payart, and today we're going to be talking about a little thing called stable coins. It's a category of tokens that we might be familiar with, might not, but it is certainly very important and it keeps DeFi working the way it is today. Uh, so we'll jump in with the types, strategies, and uh, a little use case that you might be able to do with the real life. Because what good is DeFi if you can't move your money into the real world? So in terms of stable coins, you'll hear all sorts of stable coins. All go stable coins, USDT, which is backed by some other token or bank account. And so the idea is with certain tokens, you're going to redeem them with a bank account, like fiat. Others are hybrid, which might be collateralized through a loan. And others are based in crypto, algorithmically, like Rye, or you might have heard of others like Frax. And so we'll jump in. With a fiat backed, they maintain their prices through redemptions. USDC, you go to Coinbase, give them a little money through ACH. And if it's over a dollar, you'll basically put in a dollar, get a dollar and one, dollar two, and sell it for some Ethereum. And if it's under, well, you'll buy it and then just redeem it for a dollar in your bank account. Hybrid works a little bit different. There's certain incentives that you want to do. For example, interest if, uh, or fees. And the interest work to maintain a certain balance. So if there's too many stable coins in the system because somebody decided to mint a lot, you might need to amp up the, uh, the interest just like the Fed does because you want to curtail inflation. And so you can make it more expensive. And that's how you can reduce the supply and bring their value up or down, depending on how you want it. Now, my favorite one is fee-based, because it takes a little bit of one and a little bit of the other to make sure that you stay at a dollar. Now, it can fluctuate, and that's OK. But what happens then is certain actors come in and try to uh, either buy or sell a token to maintain it at around a dollar. The best thing is they're not necessarily backed buy a dollar in a bank account, so you can actually do fun things with your crypto. Now, the stablecoin that I work with is my finance, and it's incentive-based. It's available on Phantom, Polygon, Avalanche, and a couple other chains you might have heard of. And it's based on these incentives. So you have three different incentives here. Crypto assets, interest-bearing crypto, and interest-bearing stablecoins. Now, those are the main three collaterals we use, as well as on the side, we have variable lending markets. And so how do these incentives work? Well, you can follow trends. So if you've got crypto, and all of crypto is going down, everyone's going to be buying that stable coin to pay back their debt. Now, that's where you lock up your crypto. You pull out your uh, well, mint a stable coin. And now you have dollars. Similar thing with interest bearing. That's when you can put in Ethereum or Bitcoin into a protocol, get, uh, lend it to somebody else, earn an interest on that, and you're able to now uh, have an asset that's slowly growing, but also the dollars behind it. So we'll jump in a little bit on the strategies of these so you can kind of gauge which side is best for you. The coolest, uh, one of the easiest ones that you can do is margin trading. So let's say you have $1,000 worth of Ethereum, and it just dumped. Well, you know it's not going to go under, 200, uh, let's say, $200. So you can borrow up to whatever you believe is your safest uh, ratio. And you can now have up to 4x exposure to that token, which is kind of nice sometimes. Others, which are a little bit more exotic, is where you have the same asset on a lending protocol, and now you borrow against it, which does something very interesting, because you're already earning some interest on your token. For example, on Ethereum, you can earn about 5% APR. But with this leveraging, you can earn about 19%, so that's 3.8 increase. Now, it's generally safe, but protocols get hacked every once in a while, so you got to make sure you pick the right ones so that you don't access 
will lose some of your tokens. Uh, one of my favorites, though, is interest-bearing stablecoins. And this is one of the different ways we use to keep the value of the stablecoin at a dollar. So if it goes over, we incentivize this type of minting, which is depositing a token into an interest-bearing platform, but it's a stable token, so it's a dollar. But now you can uh, multiply the, your APR and earn 30%, 40% per year, which is pretty fantastic if you think about it. You know, you have, it's a little bit like a certificate of deposit in a bank, but now you're earning 30%, not that means leave 0.5%. And the last one is variable lending markets. This is where you actually have to pay interest. Sorry, not everything is free. But you're able to access new collaterals. Uh, for example, recently we launched a market for Tomb. So Tomb Finance, you're able to now take your Tomb, deposit it into a market, and borrow my against that. So if you have a few million worth of Tomb, you don't want to sell it because it will destroy the market. But now you're able to access some liquidity without actually needing to do anything else, which is great because if you go to a bank today and you say, I have $5 million worth of X token, they're going to say, good luck. Nice. Come back to me when you got money in your bank account. So what else could you do? If banks are not going to take your crypto, how could you buy that Lambo? Well, today I'll show you how you can finance a car loan using crypto. And it follows, I think, about five different steps. You start with a uh, stable, such as DAI, which is by MakerDAO. And let's say you buy a Lamborghini, around $300,000. Well, you take that die and you deposit it into a platform such as Yearn. Yearn is a platform that lets you access yield to your other assets. So you convert it into something called YV die, which is Yearn's version of die. And you now take that and you deposit it on our platform, my.finance. And what's cool is that you can borrow my against that. That my could then be converted into USDC or USDT. Now, these are redemption tokens, which could be taken to a bank, special banks, certain people, and move that money into your bank account, which can then be used uh, for real dollars. And then you can get a car. So in uh, summary, you can take out your dime and put it to work. You're making a good percentage, so even if you don't leverage that, in about five years, you'll have your money back. But now you also have a car. So it's an interesting way to, uh, interesting way to incentivize crypto to maintain a dollar. So in general, that's uh, the best way you should manage your stable coins. There's others as well. This is just a very generic broad stroke uh, analysis. So. One more thing, fight inflation. You can either leverage your stable coins to make some money or use your crypto without selling it. And so I hope you guys are able to uh, take what I gave you today and learn how to, to uh, manage your tokens better. Thanks.